Team Fortress 2 is a relic from an era where content in games meant everything. Unlike some modern games, which retail for $60 and take up 200 gigabytes of disk space, Team Fortress 2 was originally released as a bundle with other games, or on Steam by itself for 20 bucks. And although it only shipped with six maps at launch, there are now a total of 117. Oh, and the game's free now too. Team Fortress 2, currently, is a 9.2 gigabyte download on Steam. This download is compressed, and the game turns out to take up 21.5 gigabytes of disk space after the install completes. In summer of 2015, Valve released the Gunmetal update for TF2. This update not only introduced weapon skins and contracts, but also four new maps to play on, being Powerhouse, Borneo, Suijin, and Snowplow, the latter three being community-made. Compared to previous community maps that were eventually implemented into the game, these had a significantly higher level of detail, featuring several custom materials never seen in the game up until that point. Normally, people who create custom maps and use custom materials would embed the files into the maps themselves, leading to players being able to play their creation without having to deal with tons of crazy manual downloading. However, the more custom materials you use, the bigger the file size of the map becomes. When a community map was selected to be included in Team Fortress 2 prior to Gunmetal, any custom assets the map used were implemented directly into TF2's file system, lowering the final file size of the map in question, and making the assets usable in Hammer for other maps. However, the new Gunmetal maps didn't do that. If we try to find, say, Kothswegen's custom models in Hammer, they won't show up. But if we look at the file size of Kothswegen in the Maps folder, it claims to be 43.4 megabytes, which is significantly smaller than one would expect from a map that has tons of custom assets in it. How is this possible? Short answer? BSP zip. Along with shipping the new maps, weapon skins, and contracts, Valve also quietly updated the functionality of one of the game's included tools, BSPZip. Before Gunmetal, BSPZip was useful merely for packing custom materials, such as textures and models, into a map. When Gunmetal dropped, BSPZip learned a new ability, Zip Compression. By passing a map through BSPZip before uploading it, you can effectively compress all the contents inside the map, including both custom materials and the map data itself, and the game can simply decompress and cache the materials whenever the map gets loaded. This has the effect of drastically reducing the file size of a map stored on the local disk, and is immensely beneficial for end users downloading maps with tons of custom assets. Before BSP zip compression, Kotswegen takes up a whopping 119 megabytes, but passing it back through BSP zip brings the map down to 43.4 megabytes. That is an insane improvement over the original file size. What about another gunmetal map, Borneo? Before compression, the map takes up 71 megabytes of disk space. After compression, the number lowers to a mere 23.9. Using zip compression like this means that having multiple copies of assets in multiple maps becomes less of an issue, and custom material authors can easily ensure that their assets don't become usable by anyone booting up TF2's included copy of Hammer, in the event that they don't want their stuff to be reused. Within the last couple of years, I've tried my hand at using Hammer to make my own maps, the most recent of which being Frightier, still in development. BSPZip has been immensely useful in the testing process, allowing me to send pre-release versions of the map to testers more quickly and efficiently, as well as letting the maps take up less disk space on my extremely limited web server. You know what's even cooler though? The game's built-in workshop map upload tool will automatically run BSPZip when you select a map to upload, saving on download times for users without you even having to do anything. Nice. This got me to thinking, though. Ever since Gunmetal, any map updated or added to the game in that time frame since has had BSPZip applied to it for one reason or another. If Valve has been taking the time to do this for every map updated since Gunmetal, why not just apply it to every map in the game? Sure, maps would take a little bit longer to load at first due to decompression, but disk space and the initial download of TF2, potentially, could become so much lower than it is today. I was curious as to what the exact amount of space savings could be, so I decided to run a little experiment to find the answer. First, I booted up my laptop, closed Steam, and deleted all of TF2's data from its storage. Then I reopened Steam and downloaded Team Fortress 2 again. This was done to ensure that I had fresh files and no residual data that could mess with my experiment. 
Next, I went into the game's files and found the file size of everything in the maps folder, which brought me to a grand total of 4.23 gigabytes. I then wrote a simple batch script that would find every map in the maps folder and run BSP zip compression on all of them automatically, so I wouldn't have to take forever manually entering all of them myself. If BSP zip ran into a file that had already been compressed, it would attempt to compress it again, but the resulting file size of the map would end up just the same as before. This could be useful to check which maps are already using BSP zip for compression. All I had to do at this point was run my script, start the stream that I had just remembered that I had to do that day, whoops, and wait for the results of my experiment. A couple hours later, I noticed the command window was closed, meaning that my script had completed going through every map and compressing those that weren't already. Checking the file size of everything in the maps folder again led me to a grand total file size of 2.64 gigabytes. Compared to the original 4.23 gigabytes, that is a whopping 38% decrease in file size. Map compression would definitely benefit TF2 if implemented on every single map today. But how much of a reality would this change be? Well, for starters, TF2 is not really a priority at Valve right now. Sure, there's still a small handful of people working on it from time to time, but from what I can tell, there are much bigger projects to give their attention to. Plus, working from home during the spread of the... uh human malware, tends to be a big roadblock for getting actual work done. However, making the change of compressing every map wouldn't take very much effort, and wouldn't even take very long to do. As I showed earlier, I wrote a script to automatically compress all the maps, and it took less than the three and a half hours I spent on streaming. To be honest, I don't really know the exact time it took, cause... I wasn't paying attention. Though this update would require the absolute minimum effort to achieve, I have very little hope of it ever coming to fruition. Why? Well, how about another example? What about the default settings? Yeah, I know, it's the meme I'm known for. Yeah, whatever. You had your fun. In the past couple years, I made a trio of videos dissecting why TF2's default settings are inadequate for the modern day player. Though the issues I described in all three videos would be hilariously easy to fix, and despite all the views those videos got and all the emails I've sent to Valve directly, Nothing has changed since. The game's default FOV is still 75 degrees, view model FOV is still 54 degrees, and the network settings in Interp are still as abysmal as they've always been. Updating the default settings would be easy enough to do, you know, just change a couple variables here and there. Map compression, on the other hand, would require the use of a script to automate the process, and would also require the developers to wait around for it to complete. If changing the default settings would have been an even easier fix, and that still hasn't been implemented, I have high doubts for map compression, even though I think it's cool as hell and I still wish it would happen. I still do have high hopes for Mastercom's fixes, though. In conclusion, map compression is an amazing way for community content creators to reduce the file size of their maps, and is also a brilliant technique used in the base game since 2015. I'm really glad that it's there, and is being used by some of the more popular maps, but it would be even better if it extended to every map in the game. This has been a video by Air. Thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more, and check me out on Twitch at the link in the description. Thanks again.